Today's scripture reading is from Romans chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. I'm speaking the truth in Christ. I'm not lying as my conscience assures me with the Holy Spirit. I have great sadness and constant pain in my heart. I wish I could be cursed, cut off from Christ if it helped my brothers and sisters who are my flesh and blood and relatives. They're Israelites, the adoption as God's children, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship and the promises belong to them. The Jewish ancestors are theirs and the Christ descended from those ancestors. He is the one who rules over all things, who is God and who is blessed forever. Amen. In Romans chapter 1 through 8, Paul preached a doctrinal statement about justification by faith and the love of God that gives us the gifts of salvation. Although Paul was called as an apostle to the Gentiles, he was always filled with a compassionate heart toward his own people, the Israelites who rejected Jesus Christ. This is not very different than today. The first change after being saved is we become passionate about witnessing the gospel to those around us. The more we are convinced to, of the glory of salvation, the more we experience the joy of salvation. The more we experience the joy of salvation, the more we become interested in the beliefs of our family, friends, relatives, and neighbors, and whether they believe in Jesus Christ. No one wants to go to heaven alone. The greatest blessing we could ever have would be to arrive in heaven surrounded by a great host of people we influenced for eternity. That was Paul's dream, that he wanted his fellow Israelites to go to heaven with him. It is clear from the text that Paul had a great heart for his people. Paul prayed desperately for the Israelites, and through his intercession, he was able to realize the mystery of God for the Israelites. In Romans chapter 9 through 11, Paul details those mysteries on God's salvation for the Israelites. As Paul begins to talk about the unbelief of the Israelites, he starts by declaring his great love for his fellow people. No one will ever begin to save others unless they love them first. Now, let us look at some lessons on effective attitudes of evangelism that Paul teaches us in the text. First, Effective evangelism begins with our sincerity, honesty, and integrity. Verse 1 says, I speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience conforms it in the Holy Spirit. In Christ means that Paul's words 
are true in union with Christ. Here you can see Paul's attitude of honesty, sincerity, and integrity as he approaches the Jewish people. Unbelievers may not know much about Jesus, but they are used to being deceived, especially by religious people. They know when they've been lied to or misled. Even if we can deceive all others, there is only one person we cannot, the Holy Spirit. He knows all our thoughts and heart. Here, Paul says that the Holy Spirit knows that his heart is true. When we evangelize, we must speak and act with sincerity and integrity so that the other person will open their heart and listen to what we say. Paul now honestly shares the intensity of his feelings in verse 2. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. Here the word sorrow refers sadness, while anguish refers to deep personal pain. Paul was sad and in pain when he saw the unbelief of the Israelites, and it tore his heart. Much of our evangelism has failed because we have forgotten Paul's approach. He starts by sharing his broken heart for his own people. No one can read these words and doubt his love for the Israelites. They had rejected Jesus Christ and put Jesus on the cross. But Paul didn't start there. He simply begins by sharing his heart in love and compassion. Now, let me ask some questions to reflect on ourselves. Have you ever anguished over those who don't know Jesus around you? Most of us will answer no. We are neither sad or, nor grieve anymore. It seems as if in my early days as a Christian, I was much more concerned for the souls of others. But now, it is my confess, confession that I don't anguish as much as I did then. Is it because we are so busy? Or is it because we don't believe in hell nowadays? Or is it because we are so filled with our own concerns that we have no time to think of anyone else? Next question is, if you anguish over your friends and family members' salvation, Paul considered the Israelites his own people, and he wept over them, prayed over them, anguished over them. When was the last time you and me wept over our friends who don't know Jesus? What about members of, of your own family? 
if we had the same burden of Paul's heart and prayed honestly for our family and friends, we would have seen more of them come to the Lord. My last question is, do you anguish over the state of your own soul? Where do you stand in relation to Jesus Christ? Can you say, Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord? May God bless you as you honestly explore these questions in the eyes of the Holy Spirit. Second, effective evangelism is possible by sacrificing our time, money, and even our lives. In verse 3, Paul confesses, For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Jesus Christ for the sake of my brothers. Here, Paul actually says he would be willing to go to hell if he could, if it would help his people come to Christ. Do you remember Paul concluded in chapter 8 that nothing could separate him from the love of God in Christ Jesus? But now, almost in the very next verse, he says he would be willing to be separated from Christ if only his beloved Israelites could be saved. Most of us can't understand what this statement exactly means, but one thing for sure is that Paul was not writing any doctrine about hell. Rather, he was sharing his heart. The founder of the Salvation Army, William Booth, was wondering why Christians in England at his era would not witness the gospel. As he looked at Christians who were indifferent to the souls of their neighbors, he prayed one day, God, help the Christians in England open their eyes and see hell. If we could ever see the people whom we love going to hell, we will run to our families and friends and neighbors right now and eagerly preach the gospel. Today, we no longer hear preaching about hell, but the Bible warns us that the, the unbelieving sinners have eternal punishment. One Sunday, a pastor preached about hell. This pastor often preached the theme of hell, and church members didn't like it at all. They pressured their pastor to resign, saying that his preaching was too old-fashioned and negative. After the pastor resigned, a new pastor came. The church members expected the new pastor to deliver a new message. But, unfortunately, the theme of the new pastor's favorite sermon was hell. However, the church members did not complain, even when they heard the same sermons about hell. 
So one of the church members' friend thought it was strange and asked, both pastors preached on hell. What was the difference between the two of them? The reply was, when the first pastor said it, he sounded like he was glad about it. When the new pastor says it, it sounds like he's breaking his heart. It's never easy for any of us to receive a hard truth, no matter how necessary it it is, no matter how necessary there is, but there is much better chance of hearing it if it is told from the bottom of someone's heart. Third, effective evangelism happens when we do it with great respect. In verse 3, Paul calls the Israelites, my brothers, my own people, the nation of Israel. Paul emphasized that he too is one of the Israelites. Paul respectfully says that he is no different from them. Then in verses 4 and 5, he lists the eight great advantages God gave the Israelites. These are things that were given to the people of Israel and to no one else. Adoption as sons, the divine glory, the covenant, the law of God, the temple worship, the promises, and the patriarchs. And best of all, God gave them Jesus, who is God over all, forever praised. He saved the best for last. Of all the blessings, none was greater than this. Jesus was a Jew born of Jewish parents, raised in a Jewish home, taught the Jewish law and traditions. They gave to the world the Son of God, the Messiah. They gave us Jesus. This one fact alone, we owe the Israelites a debt of eternal gratitude. Now, we come to our conclusion, which is a great principle of evangelism. You will reach more people for Jesus by seeing the best and not the worst. You will have better results if you begin with the positive and not the negative. Over the years, I have learned a lesson about evangelism, which is you can't argue with the people to make them believe Jesus Christ. Arguing just makes people angry. It makes them defensive and closes off any chance to come to Jesus Christ. Beloved congregants, how far are you willing to go to see your friends come to Jesus? What sacrifices are you willing to make? Does it bother you when people you know are going to hell? How do you feel when you think about that? 
or do you simply prefer not to think about it at all? Paul said, I think about it all the time, and it breaks my heart. If I could, I would trade places and go to hell if only my brothers and sisters could be saved. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, help us to be a faithful servant of the Lord, to preach the gospel, whether in season or out of season. Help us to be equipped as an effective evangelist for your kingdom. Amen.